Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about selling your stuff online. Have you wondered about selling stuff online but didn't know where to start? Are you looking to get some cash for a few things but don't need to do the whole garage sale? Want to know how to sell things quickly? Learn tips for selling your stuff online as we continue our month focusing on a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. First, huge thank you to my friend Claudia M from college who suggested this topic as we were texting back and forth. Duh, what a great time for this topic because still I think we need to just be careful and you can cut down on interactions and sell stuff from your home, do the safe social distancing. So huge shout out. Now I thought, so have to give a big thank to Claudia because she said, oh, I didn't realize you purchased books and asked me about them. And she said, are they different? And I said, yes, there are 10 different ones. And she purchased all 10 of my books. I mean, that's someone who I just can't tell you how touched I was by that and how much I appreciated that she would do that to support me. That is, you know, everyone's not in the, has the ability to do that, but she does and was kind enough to support me. And she would have purchased one, I would have been equally as happy. And I just, anyone who's listening, I appreciate anyone who purchases my books, but I just, as soon as she heard about them, ran out to purchase them because she wanted to support a friend. So I'm incredibly grateful for that, as well as her for a great topic for me to do a podcast on. And if there's something you want to hear me talk about, or you might say, hey, you did this four years ago. Can you do an updated version? Send me an email, julie at reawakenyourbrilliance.com, and I'm more than happy, as long as I can relate it to clutter, to do it for you. So you might be clearing a lot of physical clutter as we're staying at home more. And this, again, will help you reduce and interact less with people and still be able to declutter. If you feel safe, continue to do it this way. Getting started. So we have just gone through another round of this. We downsized in 2019, we moved in May of 2019. So we began the process hmm, about January, I'd say, really starting to do it. Then March, things started to really shift here, at least in North Carolina, Corona, the donation center was closed, things like that. And so what we had done was we just have a little table and we just put stuff on that. And when the donation center opened again, it was really great. They had a place where you could set it outside. They were going to leave it outside for a little bit. And as well as we were able to get food donations too, which is really great because Mama's House does a lot for the community. And so we just said, okay, we're just going to start this little area until it's time. So first pick where you want to start. You know, are you going to go through every room or, or are you just like, hey, my basement really needs to get a good decluttering and that's where I want to start. Now, as you're thinking about letting go of something, ask yourself, because if you're like, well, maybe I want to hold on to it. When was the last time you used it? Do you really like it? There's a podcast from a couple Januarys ago, I believe it's 2015, where I go over specific questions to ask. So there's a kind of a whole little list that you can go over, but really challenge yourself here. If you haven't used it in a while, you really don't like it, it's a gift and you're thinking you don't want to hurt someone's feelings, don't worry about that, let it go. So I'm going to encourage you to, as much as possible, release as much as you can. So you've decided, okay, I'm going to declutter the basement or the whole house. I've created my area where I'm going to keep stuff if I can't let it go immediately. So you have one place to store it. And then what I'm going to suggest you do is as you go to store it, start categorizing it. Maybe you have books, clothes, kitchen items, and it's ready and you're ready to sell everything. You're going to have it all organized. Again, that's just taking that little extra step at the beginning to make life easier. 
So after you get that and you're like, okay, Julie, I'm ready to roll. I've got a few items I want to sell. What I would first suggest you do is do some research. Get a ballpark figure of what you can sell because you might be thinking something's worth $500 and it's worth 20. I also have, I haven't sold them yet because I had someone who's really interested and I thought, oh, we'll just get rid of these plates that were given to me. But then I did a little research after there was interest rather quickly and they're actually worth something. And so I'm gonna see, there's a place called Replacements here in North Carolina. I'm gonna check them out or get a better price for them. So it's really important to get an idea. What does this go for? Is there an interest? Getting ready to sell mindset. I'm gonna start there, right? It all starts up here in the little gray cells. You have to think about, do you want peace of mind? Is cash more important? You just want the stuff out of your house. You know, my husband and I were talking this morning talking about when we move, well, what flooring do we want to get? I have allergies and we're just like, you know what? We can get airy rugs. I think we should get rid of all the carpets because that's what the allergist told me. And so he's like, yeah, he was telling me about this flooring that he brought years ago when he lived in his, his own town home. And the guy, he said, yeah, he even delivered it to me. But the guy had purchased all this flooring for his daughter when she got married and she didn't want it. And he, and he, Tony said, yeah, I got it a really good rate. Well, the guy for him, he wanted it out of the house. So not only did he give him a great deal on it, but he delivered it to him. He had a truck and Tony had a small car at the time. So be really aware of what you're trying to accomplish here. If you need extra cash, that's cool. But I'm also going to encourage you then how much, be prepared because people are going to probably lowball you. If you get all bent out of shape and angry about that, that's not going to help you. So just be prepared for that. Be prepared for some negotiation. Really know ahead of time, this is what my goal is. This is what I want to do. And so that's going to help you start thinking about that to prepare to sell. Get everything in the best possible condition. So we had friends that gave us a really hardcore, nice old toaster oven. And so we had one and I said, well, this is still really great. We've kept it in great condition. And so I had Tony clean it. I know guys, but I'm, after I'm done recording this podcast, I'm going to go clean the bathroom so he's not stuck with everything. But get it in the best condition that you can. Make sure you get a good picture. I can't tell you how many times, I mean, looking at homes, and I'm like, dang, do you want to leave? Because that's a really bad picture. So get a really good snapshot. Take as many as you need. I would show things depending on the item, different angles. If you have a picture of a really great dress, you're selling, you can X out your face or if it's your wedding gown. I know sometimes people don't like to do that. Show pictures, what it looks like on someone, but get a quality picture. Be honest, just be honest. Don't try, if it has a scratch, if it has a chip, let people know because you're gonna waste their time and yours if you are not honest about something. We once, we should have had it plugged in. We brought a dishwasher that didn't work when we were selling Tony's townhome. I was really disappointed. Luckily, we didn't spend a lot of money, but they were dishonest and people out there are dishonest. Don't be one of them. So just whatever the challenges are with the item, share them. Right to sell. Have a really great headline. What is it that you think if you were looking for something? Beautiful beaded gown only worn once. I'm trying to think off the top of my head of different things as my cat is lounging near me. Mint condition, Harry Potter series. Something that's, oh, mint condition, okay. Get as detailed as possible Why you're selling. So we had a lawnmower die and we felt it was too quickly. It was an electric lawnmower. So I wrote the company and I said, Black & Decker, come on now. We've used this 20 times. It should not have fallen apart. Well, we got signals mixed. So they sent us a new lawnmower and my husband had gone out and purchased one. So that's why we're selling it. We didn't, we don't need two lawnmowers, but there was a mix up of wires. So tell that, describe it as much as possible, include things such as smoke free home. If it's a pet free home that matters to people, how long you've had it, maybe care instructions. If it's a garment, Give people as much information as possible. Think if you were going to buy it, what questions would you have? And then include that in the description. 
And then depending on where you post it, many places are going to have great suggestions on, you know, on our website, this is how it sells really well. So for instance, eBay might have different suggestions in Facebook marketplace. So check out what the, each individual site says to sell. Here are a few tips to sell quickly. Mindset again, right? It's back to that because that's really important. Believe people are going to buy it. If you don't think anyone will buy it, they're not. Have a mindset people will buy it. Someone might say, ooh, that's a weirdo thing. Well, maybe there's another weirdo out there that would absolutely love it. I'm going to also encourage you because I've organized garage sales for myself and for clients. Be prepared to negotiate. If you're not prepared to negotiate, then maybe you need to hire someone to sell stuff for you. If it's going to drive you insane, and there's no shame in that. I know for some things, I just, when we were finishing up, we had two garage sales last year, and I just said to my husband, I just can't. You finish up, if you can get this stuff sold, I can't do this motivation. When someone got angry that I was asking a dollar, two dollars for a book instead of 50 cents. I was like, I'm not doing this. That I was like, this is a hardback book in great condition. I'm like, I'm not even having it. So anyway, be prepared to negotiate. Have a good profile. Make sure your picture's there. A good picture, we can see who you are. You're not wearing sunglasses. You're not looking shady. Put a good picture out there. Make sure your profile, ask people to provide feedback it can provide as much information of course be safe but have a good profile always follow up and do so as quickly as you can i can't tell you how many times people don't follow up and i felt bad i a year later i didn't get the message on facebook because i wasn't connected with some someone i put it on facebook marketplace i was like oh well i guess i missed that i responded and said i completely apologize i never saw this message so follow up as quickly as you can. So if you're going to start putting up stuff on a Thursday, maybe you plan for that weekend just to hang tight, clean around the house, watch a movie, but that you're close by so that you can respond or you're sitting there and have your iPad or phone or whatever to respond. Do your research so you know what is a fair price. You know, I ended up doing the research post when the dishes, there was a lot of interest quickly. And that's when I found out, oh, this is why, and I'm selling them for way too low. Don't be like me. Figure that stuff out beforehand. So if it's worth 500 and someone's like 100, you say, no, man, look, I've done the research. Offer me something that's fair. So if you do these things, those are going to help you sell quickly. Does the thought of clearing your clutter overwhelm you? Clear your clutter inside and out has 21 standalone chapters to fit your schedule and lifestyle. Stop being afraid, gain clarity, and go at your own pace. The Clear Your Clutter Inside Not Workbook lets you record your thoughts step by step as you go through the book. Free MP3 meditation with purchase. Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and also available for purchase on Amazon. Now here are some online options. Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and they should have for your area. And I also know on Facebook where I live, there are... Like, for instance, there's one for Raleigh. There's one for North Raleigh. There's one for, I think it's Southeast Raleigh. There's one for Durham. So that in addition to Facebook Marketplace, people have created groups to sell things. So look in the area where you live. There's also Bonanza, which is similar to Amazon. And then finally, Amazon Marketplace. So that's if you just want to strictly do something online. Those are some really good suggestions for you. Now here are some apps that you can use. And again, most of these a lot of times are online, sometimes they aren't. And I have it, sometimes apps are a little challenging to negotiate. As I look at the first one, which is let go, I believe you can do it online, but they really are trying to gear you towards doing it on the app. So let go. 
a lot of people found that that's good for quick sales. If you're like, I just want this up and out, consider let go. Offer up tends to favor buyers, but hopefully you'll stick with selling. So offer up is another option. And again, these are apps. They're all free apps to download. C plus is the app for Craigslist. So if you want to download something on your phone and on the go, that's your option. eBay, the experts say after me doing some research, is the best for big ticket items. So if you are going to sell something that costs a lot of money, check out eBay. And they also have eBay local. So if you have something that's heavy, and that's another thing you should consider. Are you willing to ship it? I know my husband has some tools and things that aren't super heavy and that he's ended up selling online and shipping. So that's another thing to consider. You know, are you willing to ship it and then get an idea of how much it would cost to ship it so you don't lose money on the shipping cost. Facebook Marketplace helps you reach a wider audience. You've got all that stuff they're doing behind the scenes going on and can help you reach people. Poshmark is best for selling designer items. I won't be putting anything to Poshmark. I don't think I own anything that's a designer. I have a coach purse, but I don't know. I think that that's probably not a designer item. That's probably for high-end stuff that I would know zero about. But if you have a designer closet and wanna let some stuff go, check out Poshmark. Tradez, and that's T-R-A-D-E-S-Y, is also good for designer items, second only to Poshmark. And you should be able to find these apps either, either if you have iPhone or iPad and Android. Declutter, spelled D-E-C-L-U-T-T-R, is good for your tech stuff. My, bro, or my husband just used Gazelle and he wanted to get rid of some stuff and I believe they sent the label and it, as far as I was concerned, he said it was really good and really easy to use. Again, think about is it you wanna get it out or do you want money? So check out the clutter for tech. Thread up, and that's T-H-R-E-D up, pays you before your close sell. And again, this is at the time of this writing uh, when I research this and I'm recording this. Always check the apps, always look for updates. You know, there are things out of my control. Sometimes apps disappear, sadly. Evernote cooking went away and I love that app. So just be prepared for this. But at the time that I'm recording this, they pay you before your closed sell. So you know what, that's a good deal. Again, if you're like, if I get a fair offer, I'm down with that, but it's out of the house. Now this is something I did not know, ladies and gentlemen and those of my distinguished listeners, Instagram shoppable posts, you can connect from Facebook and sell. Now, honestly, I have to figure that out. I'm on Instagram. I really consider it a hybrid. I post stuff about clutter, of course, but I post a lot of cat pictures too. But so I'm gonna have to do my research. I know that Instagram is connected to my business Facebook, so, I really try to keep that separate. So we'll have to see if I can figure that out. But that's, you know, another way Instagram to reach a bunch of people. Amazon Seller Marketplace as an app as well. Electronics and books are most popular. I know that I have purchased used books from Amazon. I'm really getting my plant library books together. We were at a used bookstore this morning locally. Lots of gardening, not one on plants or making things from herbs and plant medicine, I was kind of bummed out. But if you are looking to sell electronics or books, the Amazon Seller Marketplace app might be a good deal for you. Five Miles is good for local. If you wanna sell locally, it verifies all users to keep from people getting spam. And it's mainly good, these are the four cities that say it's really good, but again, Check this out because things change as they grow. Miami, Dallas, New York, and Tampa, which is an interesting mix of places. So check out Five Miles. It might, your city might be next where people say, hey, check this out. Trove for furniture. So if you're gonna sell some furniture, check out Trove. 
and we'll be selling our couch maybe next March or April, early May. So if you're in the area and need a couch, check it out. We love the couch, but we're trying to let go of as much stuff as we've got a bigger move coming up. Virage Cell, so it's like a take on garage. So it's V as in Victor, A-R-A-G-E Cell, can sell just about anything, they say. And that's in the Canada and the U.S. And I think a lot of these things will mainly be Canada and the U.S. And I think five miles is just in America. But, you know, you have an Amazon seller marketplace in any country you're in. I know if Amazon's got it, they are it's going to be available no matter where they are. But so check out Virage Cell. And, you know, a good thing about something like that as an app, make life easier for you. If you can get everything that you need to sell in one app, that just makes life easier. If you know, if you have a lot of clothes, then I would say definitely put it on something like Poshmark if you've got designer stuff. And then maybe if you're doing electronics, something like eBay or Amazon. But if you start putting all these thousands of different sites, not only is it a lot to keep track of, but it's just overwhelming. Simplify the process so that you can put your energy into getting it sold. Near me, all kinds of stuff. So again, it's kind of like Virage Cell, like just get a bunch of other stuff and, and get everything on one site. And then Cashify, C-A-S-H-I-F-Y, you can buy and sell used phones. So that's, you know, you probably are going to get a better deal than if you go into the, like the Sprint store or something. Couple of safety tips. Please remember these. I want you to be safe. Meet in a neutral place. Now I'm going to be honest. My husband has had people come to the house. And when I was up caring for my mom, I was like, you need to, and the guy was in cover of the night. I said, you need to email me when it's done. And then he had the guy come the next day and he was like, hey, he knows our neighbors and he's doing the electricity, all the wiring for the houses they're putting in right in the other neighborhood. So that was fortunate, but it's not always the case. So please meet in a neutral place, get cash, not a check. Be aware of all the scams that include check and checks. And then we just heard, what was the scam we heard? It was the power, the utility scam. So they're like, hey, this is Duke and we overcharged you and we're going to, you know, give us this information because we want to get you three months worth of electricity. And we're like, ha, 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 Duke giving money, ha, 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 Sorry, it's just a flat out lie. And I'm thinking you obviously don't know this area if you're thinking Duke's going to give anyone any type of money back. So that was really easy to spot. But just be aware of that. There are trolls all over. Don't get taken. And then once you have decluttered, you got some stuff sold, reward yourself. Do something healthy. Do something nice. When we made all the cash from the garage sales last May, we used a lot of it to pay the movers and to pay tips to people. But then we also treated ourselves to some really good good berries, which is frozen custard. So it was right down the street from where we used to live. So just a nice little treat of frozen custard. So even if you're paying your bills and you're working on that, or you've got say, Hey, it's going to start and loan, still take a little part of something to treat yourself. Again, it can be something small like frozen yogurt. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but you've done all that work. Do something nice for yourself. Take actions from today's podcast. Determine what items you're going to sell. Find one central location to store. Categorize what you're selling. Make sure each item is in the best possible condition. Prepare yourself mentally. Determine the best place to sell your items. Research what you're selling to determine a good, fair price. Write to sell your stuff. Be honest when describing your item. 
create a strong profile. Follow up with any inquiries. Practice safety tips. Sell your stuff. Reward yourself for a job well done. On our next episode, we're talking about communicating with the other side. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.